What is going on, garden nerds? Today, I am going to show you transformation. I hope the transformation goes good. I haven't started it yet. This is what it looks like right now. So we just got done doing a lot of house remodeling and they added a window right there and did some other things. So this side of the house was severely neglected in terms of um, my plants and my yard and my garden and everything. You can see um, in this first garden box, I got a lot of parsley going. I have some cucamelons going. I have some pots in there. Um, doesn't look the greatest. And then if you look further, um, my tomato plant spilling over um, doesn't look the greatest either, although it's given me a lot of tomatoes. Um, doesn't look the greatest either, but again, that's because it's been severe, severely neglected. If you come up here, this is all just dirt. Oh, also, let me point something out. Compaction, guys. Compaction in your soil is not good. Compaction will kill anything and everything. As they've been doing um, construction, the workers have been walking. You can see exactly where they've been walking and that has compacted the soil and now nothing is growing there. It's all right, now that they're off of it, give it a few weeks and it will come back and it will look great. Um, okay, back to over here. So this is all just dirt and trash. I have a few pots right here, um, but I hate that there is nothing green growing here. This is all messy, so this just doesn't look good. So my plan for today is to completely transform it, um, to get some good soil down there, uh, to start getting life into the soil, and then to plant some awesome things um, that will look good and colorful and soon grow up so that they're in front of the window just a little bit, like get some flowers and whatnot. I'm gonna show you some other ideas that I have um, so that when we look outside, we can see beautiful flowers. So that is what I'm going to do today. As we go along the, the process, I'm going to stop and show you why I decided to plant something here, um, why there, and my thought process behind it. Just for reference, this wall is a south facing wall. That means Jade, go stand in front of that wall. Okay. And Jade is facing, if she looks straight, she is facing south. That's how you determine what, uh, what sun direction your wall is facing. Good job, Jade. So this is a south facing wall. This means that in the winter, it's still going to get sun because the sun tilts this way and it comes back right here. So on the north side, there's not gonna be any sun in the winter, but on the south side in the winter, it's coming down right there. So I want to put something there that will want full winter sun, um, that will thrive off of full winter sun. Most of your tropicals guys are going to do great on south facing walls. So I am going to be planting a lot of tropicals here, but I have a few natives as well that I want to plant. Um, so I'm going to get started and you will follow me along on the process. Like I said, hopefully it turns out good. Stick around till the end and we'll find out. Okay, so I've gotten most of the like really bad trash, the paint chips, all the crap out of there. Um, and then I put down a little border. I need to fill the dirt back in now, but I just wanted a little border here and then over here. Let me walk over here actually. Show you. So here's the doggy door. I'm gonna clean this up too. I don't know how yet, but today I'm just focusing on this. So they'll come down and they'll have to do a quick turn. Um, and so here's a border here. So now I am going to get some composted mulch in there and start spacing out my plants. I will be back. See you soon. All right, everyone, we are making progress. Order's in, composted mulch is in. Now I'm grabbing all the stuff. We're gonna get that in, which I just realized I gotta dig some holes, which I'm not excited about. But before we dig holes, I'm gonna set it down before I plant something, especially if I'm planting multiple things, I like to just set it out. Look at the spacing, look at how it looks, make sure I like it. Um, once everything is set out and I like it, then I'll start digging holes. So right now we're gonna set it out and then I will be back. We're making progress. Here are all of the plants that are going in there. It's starting to look better. Obviously now, like I mentioned earlier with the compaction and the grass and clover not growing, that will get better. Um, I'm excited for it to get better. And then this is Relia, uh, Mexican Petunia. Man, that stuff just keeps growing. I can't get rid of it. Um, so I gotta get that out of the out of there as well. And I think I'm gonna remove those bricks too. 
get rid of the Mexican petunia and then let the grass and clover start to grow back there. But anyways, let's go by one by one. You can see I got lots of color in here. So let's start with this is a bougainvillea. You guys may say, wow, that is dumb. Don't plant bougainvillea, especially right there. It's going to get huge. It's going to get big and it has thorns, all that stuff. Yes, that is true. But I am going to. I've seen this been done successfully. I did it in my front yard a few years ago, um, but then I had to cut it down. But I am going to grow this to where it is going to be a single stem from the ground all the way up. And then I'm going to have it go along my house and trim it very well to where it's not all over the place. But the leaves and foliage are just going to kind of fall down. Maybe some hang over the windows a little bit, um, but I will keep it very trimmed. I know most of you are saying that sounds really annoying. Honestly, it's not that bad. It requires a trim every two weeks, three weeks, just a quick trim and it'll be good. And then we'll have that the, uh, bougainvillea, the color of the flowers of the like purplish pinkish ones are my wife's favorite color. So I want to grow it up there for her so she can come outside and see it. All right, next, we have some canna lilies in here, um, some over here and then some down there that are red. Um, as I mentioned earlier, these are tropical in the winter. They are going to want sun. They're gonna want sun all day long and that's what they're gonna get here. So they will be happy throughout the winter. I won't have to worry about them dying back. Same exact thing with hibiscus. And then right down here, the third one, um, that is milkweed. I wanna track beneficials, I want to attract butterflies, hummingbirds, all those things. That will do it. Um, that is not the one native to Arizona, um, but it is, I believe, native to this area, or at least similar to this area. So um, that will be there. Yes, that's a lot, but my plan is to keep it trimmed to where, as I mentioned, I want the bougainvillea flowers to, you know, not like completely cover it, but some fall down from the window. With these, I want them to grow up and just show their flowers right at the bottom of the window. So then we can still see through the window, but at the top we see some bougainvillea leaves. At the bottom we see some cannas, hibiscus, and milkweed with butterflies and other bugs. So this is a ground cover. I also wanted a ground cover in here. I am a proponent of wood chips. However, ground cover is even better because with ground cover you're taking carbon from the air, you're putting it into the ground, uh, you're feeding the life, you're building the soil life. So yes, you're doing that with wood chips, but the process is sped up so much faster with ground cover and roots going into the ground. So I have that, that will, that's very drought resistant, doesn't take a lot of water, I'll never water it directly, it will just pull water from everything over here. We'll cover all this eventually, that's the plan, because I also have some Emporium down there. So I have two that are going in the ground. There is a broccoli that just kind of sprouted. Don't want to pull it out. It's getting hot. I don't know if it'll survive, but until it dies, I'm going to let it go. These are two more canna lilies right here. This one and this one. I love those leaves. Look at that. That's beautiful. So I put those kind of up here at the front. And then the thing that I'm most excited about, and yes, I need to trim this mango. I have two mangoes, the one on either side, one and two, those are grafted. The one in the middle is a seedling from a mango I ate last summer. So the plan is with these, once they get trimmed up is, that's the middle of the window, right? So I don't want to cover the windows completely as I talked about. So I am having three mangoes almost as a hedge right here in the middle. Um, like I said, I'll trim them up and they'll be very bushy and they'll grow up. Again, like everything here, they will appreciate the winter sun coming down on them. This block wall, keeping them warm during the winter. You may say, okay, well, it's going to heat them up during the summer. Um, yes, it will. That's why I like to plant all of my tropicals very close together. They thrive that way. And if you water properly, should not have an issue. I have other mangoes on south facing walls and they do fine during the summer. And then basically I just repeated the same thing over here as I did over here. This is lots of color, I love this. So I have the um, milkweed, hibiscus, and the canna right there. And as I said, another myporium to cover all of this. So give it by the end of the summer. And of course I'll give you updates along the way, but all of this 
should be nothing but green. We should see no soil by the end of the summer. We should just see green and beautiful flowers. This was the exciting part. Now the hard part is I gotta start digging. So let me dig, get these in the ground, and I will give you an update. And we're back. And my back hurts. But I dug all of these holes. Man, that soil sucked. I cannot wait until a year from now when I go to plant something else in there. And it's so easy to plant stuff. So it's all right here. Um, I'm gonna clean up all these pots, all this compost, mulch, bags, and everything. Going to trim a few of the mangoes. I already, the, this first one right here was super long and leggy. I already trimmed that one so I could get it in the ground easier. Um, I'm going to trim the bougainvillea. Right away, I start aggressively pruning so that it does what I want it to do, which is not have any of the foliage down there. So um, I'm gonna clean all this up, trim a few things, and then come back with a few um, tips and tell you how I'm going to care for all of this, specifically how I'm going to water all of this. All right, guys, here it is. Everything's put away. Watered a lot just now. Um, but let me tell you how I'm going to care for all of this. So two things. The first thing you may have already noticed, there's a bunch of crap down there. Um, it's actually not crap. It's very good organic stuff. Um, I'm going to heavily mulch until the myporium, the ground cover can take over. I um, then at that point I won't need to, but until then I'm going to heavily mulch. What do I mulch with? Well, I mow my yard. Um, you can see there's a lot of like brown stuff as well. That's bamboo leaves. I have bamboo back behind me, which by the way is giving us shade right now. So this will get afternoon shade because of the bamboo right here. So this will get afternoon shade. But that's my grass clippings, that's bamboo um, droppings, that's any anything else that I mow up when I mow my yard. And I don't keep a super tidy lawn. It's pretty organic. Well, I should say it's all organic. So I'm picking up tons of stuff and I throw it down there. That's the first thing. The second thing is watering. Okay, I always talk about infrequent long waterings. However, that rule does not always apply when you plant new plants. So right now it is May, we're going into the hot season, it's heating up, I think within the week we'll be in the hundred, hundreds. Um, so what am I going to do right now for the next two weeks? I'm gonna water the crap out of all of these things. I'm gonna give them tons of water, I'm going to allow them to get established. Because if I do long and frequent waterings, well, they were just put into the ground. They have not established any roots yet. So. I'm wasting water because there's no roots down there. Roots don't grow that fast. They grow probably faster than we think, but they don't grow that fast. So I'm gonna water the crap out of it, give it all the water that it needs so that the root ball that is in a new spot does not dry out. I'm gonna make sure that they're completely moist for at least the next two weeks. That probably means watering it every single day. After those two weeks, I will come back, I will show you all, and then probably after that with watering, then I'll move to my schedule like I do for everything else in my yard once a week, deep watering, and that is it. Tell me what you think. I think it turned out great. I can't wait as it heats up. And this just takes off. By the end of the summer, this is gonna be a full on jungle next to all my vegetables and everything else growing there. So there we go. Thanks for coming along for the ride, guys. Thank you.